Hi and welcome to UI Interactions with Chet, a powerful CSS user class. My name is Ryan Seddon and in this screencast we'll go through how you can utilize the CSS Check Suda class to react to user interactions without JavaScript. And we'll learn a few neat tricks along the way. So what is Checked? It's a pseudo class for radio and checkbox input elements. What I mean by pseudo class is it's a way for CSS to target an element state that isn't necessarily accomplished through normal CSS selectors. The most familiar one would perhaps be the hover pseudo class that allows you to react to mouse interactions. This, like hover, allows you to react to the state of the checkbox or radio element, whether it's ticked or not. This leads to powerful capabilities where we can affect the layout of another element based on the checkbox state. So what you'll learn in this screencast, how we can create interactions using CSS only, essentially react to state without JavaScript, which is really cool. We utilize some advanced CSS selectors, one of those being the direct sibling combinator denoted by the plus there. This allows you to target the element sibling, for example, targeting a span that's preceded by a checkbox. The before and after pseudo elements allow you to create fake elements without having to add extra markup to your HTML so you don't have to muddy it up with all these empty elements. This allows you to do much more powerful styling with less markup. And lastly, how you can take these techniques and use it in your own work. So what we'll build in this screencast is a simple recreation of the iOS toggle switch. If you use an iPhone or an iPad with the settings, you'll be used to seeing these all the time. Essentially, we have two states. The first image with the green background and the white circle on the right hand side is the check state. And the second image with the white background and the circle on the left hand side is the unchecked state. So already we can easily see how we can map this to a checkbox. Okay, so let's jump to the code. So first what we want to do is we want to create um, some markup for our uh, custom iOS toggle switch. So we'll just add some classes. We'll add a, a top level switch class. Inside that we'll put an input type checkbox so we can utilize our check pseudo class. And then um, we'll give that a class to a switch input so we can style that. And we can do some special styling for that. And then next to that, um, as a sibling, we'll create a span also with a class, which is where much of the styling will go. And um, we'll give that a class of switch a thumb. So we'll just expand that, um, that markup. So the tool I'm using here is called Emmet. And basically it allows me to write a CSS like selector that'll expand into HTML. Just makes it a lot easier to write more complex HTML. So we can see here we've got um, a div. So the first thing we want to do is actually want to turn that div into a span into a label. So that way, um, with a label, uh, we can actually target the checkbox without having to have the checkbox visible, which is exactly what we want. We want to be able to hide that, and then we can do some special styling based on the checkbox um, state to the span itself. Uh, that way, we can. Um, get some fancy stuff happening. So the, the main style sheet we're going to have is a switch.css there. Uh, so we'll switch over to that. Uh, before we get started on that, we'll just have a look at our handiwork in the browser uh, and what we've initially got. So you can see there we've got uh, just our simple checkbox and you can see the, the markup down there just with our label and our input and our span. So now we'll get back into the switch.css style. And the first thing we want to do is actually hide the switch input so we'll just set that to display none. So we don't essentially care about seeing that at all. We just want to hide it. So if we look at the browser and we refresh, you can see now that it's actually hidden uh, and we don't want it to render. We just want to be able to react to the state. So now we have our input hidden. Next, we want to set up uh, the basic uh, shell shape of our input. So that will be applied to the switch thumb style. So first thing we want to do is turn that label to an inline block element. Uh, by default they're inline, we want to make sure it has inline block, so we, want, we don't want to expand to the full width it has, we just want to be able to have some block um, uh, block element uh, capabilities, um, but also inline capabilities. Next we want to set uh, the width to 51 pixels, and then the height to 31 pixels. So this is roughly, the, this is pretty much the dimensions on, if you were to take a screenshot on an iPhone and have a look. Uh, after that we want to set up the cursor, uh, to pointer, so when the when a user hovers over it, uh, the cursor will change if they do it with a mouse. Next, we're going to do position relative, uh, which will become important when we start doing the before and after elements. Next, um, border radius. So border radius we set to 999 pixels, and the reason we do this is we want the pill shape, so like a like a circular edge pill, 
Um, and because the way border radius works, if you do a really high value and it's higher than the, the dimensions of the element, it'll do a pill shape for you automatically. Um, and lastly, before I forget, we want to add a background color. So we'll just go up the top there and we want to set it to the gray background color of E5, E5, E5. That way it gives us the, the same background color as the iOS toggle switch. So we highlight that. Now you can see we've got our pill shape and we've got our base setup of uh, the switch thumb. So we have the shell and now we want to set up uh, the before and after pseudo class to, to get the extra elements like the, the thumb slider bit and the actual background color because we want to create like a special border. So what we'll do is we'll do some uh, common styles between the before and after pseudo classes. Uh, in there we want to set it position relative, uh, sorry absolute. And that's important because last time we did relative in the parent container and because before and after are treated as children of, um, of the selector it's applied to, um, we can then absolutely position them uh, relative to the container, which is the pill shape of the switch. We'll set a uh, common height of width, 27 pixels, and height, 27 pixels. And we'll also set the background for both. So we'll do some overrides um, for the before um, pseudo class in a second. We also offset the position by two pixels for both top and left to give that, um, that border you'll notice around that we'll check out in a second. And also importantly, when we have before and after, we need to set the content, um, the, the content property. Otherwise, uh, uh, none of these styles would be applied. So we just set an empty string. And again, we do the, the pill effect. So if we jump over, you can see now we've got that um, gray background uh, from the shell shape. And we've also got the, the round circle now. But you'll notice that before and after are both the same shape. So we need to fix that up now because we've got the common styles. Now we need to override those. So first we're going to do the before. So the before will act as the background uh, of, the, of the switch that will change color based on its state, um, which we'll get into. So in before, all we want to do is um, change the width of that. So we'll make that 47 pixels. So you remember that the 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 shape is um the the length was 51 pixels we kind of want to offset by two pixels on either side so it's kind of like minus four which gives us 47 so now you can see we actually can't see anything but the two elements are styled differently so now to give the the actual circle toggle switch some definition we'll apply a box shadow to that and just a really simple one of one pixel um one pixel spread and we'll give it a slight transparent black color so we'll set that one pixel um, we don't care about any of the other values, um, just to give it some slight definition. And we'll use the RGBA uh, color function in CSS, which takes four arguments, and the last one being the alpha transparency. So it says 50% transparent black we want to apply, so 000 is black. And then if we refresh that, you can see now that the actual toggle switch has got some definition. You can, and you can tell it between uh, the before and after pseudo clusters applied. So our thing's really starting to take shape and look pretty cool now. Now we get on to the actual checked bit of using us uh, of our checkbox. So the first thing we want to do is we actually want to change the color based on the check state. So what we've been building up to, this is like the off state of the, of the switch. So we can do that using the checked pseudo class in, on the switch input itself. And this is where the plus or the sibling combinator comes into, into work. And what we say when the input is checked, we actually want to affect the styles of the switch thumb. And what we actually want to change is the background color to that green color you'll notice. Um, and that way uh, we can we can style other things based on the state of something else. And in our case, it's that input. So we set that to 4CD964, which is the green color, similar to what the iOS toggle switch uses. And we also actually want to change uh, the background of the pseudo class as well. So you know how we've got that gray border applied to the switch thumb, which is the background color, and we offset uh, the before pseudo class to be two pixels off. Uh, we actually want to change the background color there too to the same color. And that way when it when it's on you'll have the whole thing is green and when it's off it's got a gray border and a white background. But actually what we want to do here, um, we can see some uh, some little refactoring we can do here because we're applying the same property we can actually um, do those two styles together. So let's move that up there. Uh, we'll shift that across and we'll just do the comma separated selectors here. And we'll just delete that um, background down the bottom here. And that way we've just refactored some CSS um, just so we're not repeating ourselves. And then the other thing we actually want to add uh, is to change the position 
of the um, the after pseudo class, which is the little circle toggle switch. So when it's on, we want it to switch to the right. Uh, again, we need to apply it to the check state. We use the sibling combinator to, to target the switch thumb, which is directly after the input. And then we just set the right to two pixels because we want that offset. Uh, and we can then um, reset the left and we can do um, the inherit property. And that way uh, we won't have two applied. Uh, but if you don't want to do that, you can also set it to auto. So inherit will inherit from its parent. So if you've got some other positioning above there, it's probably better off set it to auto. So we'll change that to auto. If we jump over to the browser now, and we refresh, uh, nothing must have changed, but when we click our label, which checks the checkbox, you can see now it's actually applied the check state. You can see it, the background being applied there, which is pretty cool. Uh, and then we can uncheck it. Same same deal there. We've got the, the position applied to each of the pseudo elements. Uh, and we can see with, with very simple CSS, we've got some pretty powerful um, uh, and highly stylized like element just based on a checkbox and some simple markup. And you can see there, uh, within 33, 39 lines of code, we've, we've done a pretty, pretty cool job there. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed building a iOS toggle switch.